A universe has four dimensions, three spatial dimensions and one dimension of time, all interwoven into what we call spacetime. Imagine a world with only one spatial dimension. We could only move forward or backward along a line. In a world with two spatial dimensions like a flat sheet of paper, we could move left, right, up, or down, but that's it. We live in a three-dimensional world, so we can move freely in all directions. But in space-time, we're also moving through time. We can move freely in those three spatial dimensions, but with time, we're basically stuck on a one-way street, always moving forward. But what if we could find a way to hack that system? What if we could go back in time, or maybe even fast forward to the future? The truth is, it might actually be possible. It's definitely not something we can do right now, but the laws of physics don't completely rule it out. In this video, we're going to explore some of the most fascinating theories about time travel, and I'm going to rank them based on how likely they are to actually work in the real world. According to Einstein's theory of special relativity, time actually slows down for objects that are moving super fast, close to the speed of light. Imagine we have identical twins, let's call them Alice and Bob. Alice stays here on Earth, while Bob hops into a spaceship and blasts off to a distant star at 99% the speed of light. Bob makes the round trip and returns to Earth after what he experiences as one year. When he steps out of his spaceship, seven years have passed for Alice. Let's break down the math real quick. One year is the time experienced by Bob on the spaceship. 99% the speed of light is Bob's velocity relative to Alice. Solving for the time experienced by Alice on Earth, we get approximately 7.09 years. So, essentially, Bob has traveled to the future. This is a real phenomenon, and while we can't reach those speeds yet, it means that traveling near the speed of light could allow humans to time travel to the future. I'm putting this one firmly in the S-tier for its solid scientific backing. What if, instead of just approaching the speed of light, we could actually surpass it? If we could somehow break this cosmic speed limit, we might enter a realm where the normal rules of time and space go completely out the window. Imagine a world where the lines between past, present, and future become blurred, allowing us to potentially jump around in time at will. But according to Einstein's theory of special relativity, nothing with mass can ever reach, let alone exceed the speed of light. Here's a bit of the science behind it. Combining the equations, we get this. As velocity gets closer and closer to the speed of light, this approach is 1. Then this approach is 0. As a result, the energy approaches infinity. And in the real world, infinite energy sources just don't exist. The faster than light travel seems pretty impossible, so F tier. But wait a second. Here's where things get interesting. We have a concept called the Alcubierre Drive. This is a theoretical idea that suggests faster than light travel might be possible, without actually violating Einstein's theory of relativity. Behind the spaceship, space expands, this expansion pushes the spaceship forward as space is stretched out behind it. In front of the spaceship, space contracts. This contraction pulls the ship toward its destination by shrinking the space ahead of it. The ship resides in a region called a warp bubble, a stable, localized area of spacetime. Because of this intriguing possibility, I'm going to bump this up from an F tier to a D tier. Tachyons are hypothetical particles that always travel faster than light. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, a particle cannot accelerate to speeds faster than light. But what if it were already moving faster than light from the very beginning? What if it had been created this way in the Big Bang? If that were the case, it would be unable to slow down to the speed of light. In other words, it would require an infinite amount of energy to decelerate to light speed and would reach infinite speed when at its lowest energy state. So since they always travel faster than light, some physicists have theorized that they could be used to send information back in time. Imagine creating a talking signal and sending it to a receiver in the past. That receiver could then decode the signal and gain knowledge from the future. Some even speculate about using Tachyons to build a time machine by creating a sort of Tachyon loop where Tachyons are sent into the past and then back to the future. 
If humans could interact with this loop, they might be able to travel along with the Tachyons to the past or future. But Tachyons are still purely hypothetical. We've never actually observed them and their existence would challenge some fundamental principles of physics. So, while the concept is super intriguing, I'm going to have to give this one an F-tier ranking for now. Black holes form when massive stars, at least eight times the mass of our sun, collapse under their own gravity. These stars burn through their fuel to pushes against gravity, starting with hydrogen and then moving on to heavier elements like helium, carbon, and eventually iron. But fusing iron actually consumes energy instead of producing it, and the balance between radiation and gravity is suddenly broken. This causes the core to collapse rapidly, leading to a supernova explosion. What's left behind can be a few different things. A star whose core is below the Chandrasekhar limit, about 1.4 times the mass of the sun, becomes a white dwarf. If the core's mass is above the Chandrasekhar limit but still below the Talmanoppenheimer-Volkoff limit, estimated between 2 to 3 solar masses, it will become a neutron star. If the core exceeds the Talmanoppenheimer-Volkoff limit after the supernova, it will collapse into a black hole. Here's the thing about black hole. It has this boundary called the event horizon. Anything that crosses the event horizon would need to travel faster than the speed of light to escape, which is impossible according to the laws of physics. At the center of a black hole lies the singularity, a point of infinite density and gravity where the laws of physics break down, and we're not even sure what it actually is. Black holes have such strong gravity that they warp time and space around them. And according to Einstein's theory of general relativity, time slows down in strong gravitational fields. Black holes have such strong gravity that they warp time and space around them. According to Einstein's theory of general relativity, time slows down significantly in strong gravitational fields. Let's look at the math for a non-rotating black hole, a Schwarzschild black hole. Now, imagine Bob just outside the event horizon of a black hole, where the Schwarzschild radius is 1,000 meters and his distance from the center is 1,001 meters. If Bob experienced one year according to his clock, how much time would pass for Alice on Earth? To find the time that passed for Alice, we rearrange the formula. Solve for t, we have approximately 31.62 years would pass for Alice on Earth while Bob, near the black hole, experiences one year. But of course, getting close to a black hole comes with some serious challenges like intense gravity, warped spacetime, and harmful radiation. So, while it's a fascinating possibility, I'm placing black holes in the B tier for now. Let's take things up another notch and talk about rotating black holes, also known as Kerr black holes. Instead of just sitting still, Kerr black holes spin, creating fascinating effects on spacetime around them. Unlike non-rotating black holes with a point singularity, Kerr black holes feature a ring-shaped singularity. They have to event horizons, an outer and an inner event horizon. The ergosphere is a region where spacetime itself is pulled and dragged by the black hole's intense rotation, a phenomenon known as frame dragging. This inner region theoretically harbors closed time-like curves, paths in spacetime that loop back on themselves, potentially allowing travel to the past. Theoretically, a Kerr black hole could allow time travel through a region of space containing closed time-like curves. Here's how it might work. You will need an advanced spacecraft to enter the inner ergosphere, which lies between the inner event horizon and the ring singularity of the Kerr black hole. Within the inner ergosphere, you have to locate and enter a closed timelike curve. The closed timelike curve would carry you along a path through spacetime that loops back to a point in the past. Then you need to find a way to exit the closed timelike curve and escape the black hole. However, here's the major issue, crossing the outer event horizon traps everything within the black hole, making escape to normal space impossible. So I'd rank this possibility in the D tier, fascinating but not practically feasible with our current understanding. Typeler cylinder, also known as the Typeler time machine, this was proposed by physicist Frank Typeler back in 1974. Imagine an infinitely long cylinder with an incredibly high density, spinning incredibly fast. This rotation creates some seriously strange effects on spacetime around it. Here's how it might work for time travel. The rapid rotation of the Typeler cylinder warps spacetime around it to an extreme degree. 
This warping could potentially create closed time-like curves, those loops in spacetime we talked about earlier that could allow an object to travel back to its own past. Theoretically, a spaceship could travel in a spiral path around the Typolar Cylinder, enter a CTC, and potentially journey back in time. But here's the thing, building a Typolar Cylinder would be insanely difficult, if not impossible. A Typolar Cylinder would need to be infinitely long to create those closed time-like curves, require an incredibly high density, far beyond any material we know of, need a colossal amount of energy to spin it up to the required speed. So, for now, the Typolar Cylinder remains more of a science fiction concept than a practical solution for time travel. I'm putting this one in F-tier alongside Tokyans. Wormholes also known as Einstein-Rosen bridges and they're like tunnels connecting to different points in spacetime. Imagine spacetime as a sheet of paper. If you fold that sheet so that two points touch, you could travel between those points by going through the fold instead of traveling along the surface of the paper. That's kind of how a wormhole works. It creates a shortcut through spacetime. So, if we could travel through a wormhole, we might be able to reach a different point in spacetime, potentially traveling to the future, the past, or even another universe. Wormholes might theoretically form at the singularity of black holes within quantum fluctuations or along cosmic strings. We haven't actually observed any wormholes yet. They're still theoretical, but physicists are actively researching them. In 2022, scientists from Caltech and Google used the Sycamore quantum computer to simulate a very simplified version of a wormhole. They sent quantum information into one wormhole and observed it emerge from the other as if it had traveled through a tunnel in spacetime. This experiment doesn't prove wormholes exist but showcases how quantum entanglement could mimic wormhole-like behavior. I'm putting wormholes in C-tier for now. They're a fascinating concept with some scientific basis, but their existence is still uncertain. While black holes suck everything in, including light, white holes are thought to spew out matter and energy, but don't allow anything to enter, not even light. Imagine this. If you could enter a black hole and somehow survive passing through the singularity, you might emerge from a white hole at a different point in spacetime, potentially in the past. Another possibility is that white holes could be the other end of a wormhole, connected to a black hole. Matter sucked into the black hole could be ejected from the white hole in a different region of spacetime, or even a different universe. This could potentially allow for time travel as well. Just like wormholes, we haven't actually observed any white holes yet. They're still theoretical, although both black holes and white holes are valid mathematical solutions to Einstein's field equations in his theory of general relativity. I'm going to give white holes a D-tier ranking. In the first moments after the Big Bang, the universe was incredibly hot and dense with the fundamental forces of nature possibly unified as a single force. As the universe expanded and cooled, these forces separated in a process called symmetry breaking involving phase transitions in fields like the Higgs field that reshaped spacetime. However, these transitions didn't occur uniformly across space, creating regions of mismatch called topological defects similar to the cracks that form when water freezes into ice. Among these defects, cosmic strings could have formed and stretched over vast distances as the universe expanded. Cosmic strings are extremely thin yet possess immense mass and energy density, stretching across billions of light years and exerting a powerful gravitational pull capable of warping spacetime and potentially creating closed time like curves. When two cosmic strings move close to each other at near light speeds, they create an intense warping of spacetime. This warping is so extreme that it could theoretically produce a closed time-like curve, potentially allowing an object to loop back and return to its own past. Alternatively, a single cosmic string rotating rapidly or within the event horizon of a black hole might also create a closed time-like curve. While we haven't observed any cosmic strings yet, they remain a theoretical possibility with intriguing implications for the nature of spacetime and time travel. I'm placing cosmic strings in D-tier for time travel feasibility. So, there you have it, a rundown of some of the most mind-blowing time travel theories out there. What do you think about time travel? Which theory did you find the most fascinating? Let us know in the comments below.